Hello, everybody. It's Christy Whitman with the Quantum Success Show, where you can get your information and inspiration to create your desires. So as you can see, I have a friend with me. This is the amazing, the amazing, amazing, when I say amazing, Pete Vargas. I have heard about Pete for several years now, and I actually had a mutual friend that had been trying to um, connect us well, over a year, and Pete and I finally got together. We had been on each other's calendars, and things just kept coming up, and I'm so grateful. The minute I met him, I just instantly just my heart was so open and I can see the genuineness of what his calling is, what his passion is. And I know a lot of people in this industry, I'm very particular on who I bring to this particular stage, who I put in front of you. And so um, I'm super excited to introduce you all to Pete. So welcome, Pete. Hey, thank you for having me. And I don't take it for granted that you're bringing me to your community. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, let me give everybody just a kind of, you know, little introduction to how I, you know, what you've done, because you are obviously the founder and CEO of Advance Your Reach, and it's a beautifully designed name because that is what you actually help um, coach healers, financial planners. I mean, if you have any type of business, whether you're making jellies and jams to wanting to change the world you can advance your reach, you can advance your clients with what Pete and I are going to talk about tonight. So um, he lives in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I was just there this past weekend um, working a VIP day with, with Pete and it, it was amazing. Like my head was spinning. It was so fantastic and it was spinning in a great way and I was really excited. So um, Pete and his team are responsible for booking over 25,000 stages worldwide and worldwide in the last 15 years. So Pete's not new at this. He's been doing it a long time. Um, he has booked legendary speakers like Ryan Dice. Um, you might know uh, Damon John from Shark Tank. You might know a guy named Tony Robbins, you know, guys like that, JJ Virgin, people like that. So he has been educating speakers about how to book stages for over 10 years. He has helped speakers, entrepreneurs, nonprofit organizations, small business owners land speaking stages and leverage the stage to be able to grow their business. So that's why we're here tonight. Um, I know many of you come here and watch these shows because you want to learn how to create success, how to create financial abundance, how to be able to do that working with the universal laws. And once you do that, like my book, Quantum Success, it's all about alignment and then it's about momentum. And so we're going to talk about the momentum side of things tonight because people ask me all the time, if you were just starting out as a coach, just brand new today, what would you do? And I say, I, I tell them all the time, I would do the exact same thing that I did 18 years ago, and that is speak on stages. Mm. So Pete, I am super excited to have this conversation with you. I know that you are obviously just very passionate about um, talking about stages. And I would love to share like what your perspective is, like why from anybody from a coach to a financial planner, to a small business owner, to an entrepreneur, to someone that's even in corporate America, why would they want to speak on stages? Yeah, I believe, I, here's one thing that I believe. I believe that everybody has story and a message that lives within them that can make this world a better place like and, and when I say world I could make it a better place that could be with their mindset that could be with their healing that could be with their finances that could be with their marketing that could be with their sales I just feel like everybody has experiences which I say is a message and one of the things that's harder than ever before in just a noisy online world is getting your message to stand out and really to be heard. And another thing is actually pulling out that message to understand clearly what it is that you do. So it's not just pulling, it's not just being heard, but it's also pulling it out. And so I believe I had a mentor call me um, 15, 17 years ago. And he said, Pete, there is this man and you have to trust me bring him into your hometown to speak to your kids because I worked with teenagers back then. I was a youth pastor. And he said, this guy, nobody knows. He's the best kept secret and the world needs to know about him. But it, it, his organization is starting to go this way and he needs to be heard by the world. His message needs to be heard by the world. And so I said, okay, I trust you, Bob. Like, what's his name? I said, his name is Daryl Scott. And his daughter was the first girl killed at Columbine back in 1999. She left her father with six diaries and a paper called My Ethics, My Codes of Life that she wrote one month before she was killed. 
And as her dad read all of her writings, similar to Anne Frank, um, there was a theme in them. And the theme was compassion will change our world. And he said, her dad's been trying to get this message out and he's struggling. I brought him to Ohio. It was like a hit, but nobody knows him. So I brought him in and long story short, you know the story, but my dad heard him speak. And as a result of that, I was 23 years old. My dad was an extremely abusive dad to me growing up. My grandmother took me away from my dad because of the things he did to me. I had tried everything to try to make things right. My dad heard this man speak. I thought I was bringing him in for my kids. My dad heard him speak. And all of a sudden, one stage, one hour, all of a sudden my dad takes action and writes me a letter, asks for forgiveness for the father he's been, asks for a second chance to do things right. And he told me for the first time in a long time that he loved me. And so that day, subconsciously, I'm gonna to get to what you asked, but subconsciously, I bought into this idea of stages. I'm like, okay. One man, one message, one stage did something for my dad that nothing else worked for my dad. Nothing else worked. Okay, this is cool. So I called him. I'm like, Daryl, Bob has kind of told me like you're trying to get this out. You don't know how to get it out. And he said this. He said, Pete, I'm trying a lot of things, all of these things to try to get my message out to the world. And I can't figure it out. And just like you and I spent time on, on Saturday, like really diving into your business and your message and it's established and it's, it's known, but it's not, I mean, it, it, even in see, being able to see things, even in you, that's kind of what I saw in Daryl. I'm like, Daryl, get this message in front of educators on a stage. And I, it's going to work. And deep down inside, I'm like, I think it's going to work. And he's like, that's cool. I haven't really tried what you're talking about, but I don't have anybody to do it. And so I put him on a stage. In 2002, he did $150,000 in revenues. And, and here's the thing, you can't have the reach you want without the revenues. In 2003, he did $52,000 in revenues. I have the numbers on it. And in 2004, I won him a stage kind of like bootstrapping, understanding how to win stages. I won him a stage. He wanted to change the school system. So he was in front of 400 educators. Your audience wants to change somebody. So just replace those 400 with whomever you want to change. So put yourself in his shoes right now. Best kept secret. He's got a stage of 400. He delivered his message in a very powerful way. And at the end of that presentation, 350 of them gave us their contact information because we gave them a free gift. In the next two weeks, he, we saw about 70 or 80 of those schools say, we want your program. We want to pay the $3,000, $3,500 to bring your program in. We did five times the revenues in one stage than he had done the previous 12 months. And that's when the consciousness of stages, the subconscious was like, oh, this moved me and my dad. The conscious was like, this man couldn't get his message out there and all of a sudden you said the word momentum momentum started to snowball and now fast forward 15 years at the peak they did seven million dollars in revenues they're impacting millions of kids teen suicide prevented every day school shooting prevented every month and the number one way that they've done it is stages christy said 18 years ago that's what she would tell people she would do guess what that's what JJ Virgin did. Guess what? That's what Tony Robbins did. Guess what? That's what Pete Vargas did. Guess what? I could go on and on and on of people who understand stages creating momentum and no longer being the best kept secret. And so that's why I'm convicted with stages from that day. We've now done it over 25,000 times. So that stage was the first stage I booked. And because of that, we figured out this incredible system to make sure that people can actually use stages in a powerful way to get their message out to the world. So I could hear my audience going, like I could hear some of my coaches going, yeah, that might be good for you, but not for me. Um, I can't speak on a stage. I'm terrified, right? And we know that, right? Public speaking, whether it's to five people or to your mentioning to 400 people, right? Or it could be thousands of people, that terrifies people to their, you know, to the cells in their body, right? It's like the number one fear that most people have beyond, like above death. Like people are less afraid of death than they are getting up on a stage and speaking to people. 
It's true. It's true. And that's crazy to me that you'd rather want to be the one in the morgue than the one giving the eulogy. <laughs> like, that's just crazy to me. I want to be the one on the eulogy talking about how amazing that person was. But uh, yeah, so let me, break a, let me break a couple of things that will, will help overcome that. So Perfect. here's what I do know about your audience from knowing you. They are deeply passionate about the message that they have can transform people's lives. I, I don't even can, I mean, they do know that, right? They're caught yes. they, that, that is clear. They know they've got something to change people's lives. So here's why people struggle with that confidence and overcoming that fear. And, and by the way, we're going to talk about like, there could be physical stages. There could be digital stages. There could be big physical stages or local stages with 30 people, 20 people, 10 people. So we'll get there. But the first thing that they think that um, the first thing that is their struggle is man, what am I going to say? And so they need someone that gives them clarity and pulls it out of them of what they need to say. You experienced that on Saturday. I was listening to you, hearing your stories, hearing your heart and got clear on bam, 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 bam. And so once you get that clarity, so they need someone to be able to help them do that or they need to just start writing some of these stories down, some of these messages down and beginning to see this through line theme of what is the story that they're supposed to share with the world. And so the first reason they're afraid of it is because they need to get that clarity of what am I supposed to say? Then once they have this clarity, they, I got to break a myth. A lot of people think that, man, I need all of these talks. The reason I overcame my fear of speaking is because I realize you only need one talk. Like people in this world have built empires with one talk, one talk. I'm sharing a talk this Saturday in um, Nashville. It's the same talk I shared four years ago. It's just got some better slides. The visuals look better. The graphics look better because I actually have a team and back then it was just me. So, but it's the same talk. And so like, that's a myth that I want to break is you only need one talk. And then here is the major reason why people are afraid on the stage. And this one, I'm not trying to make it sting at all, but what happens is it's what is happening up here. And I just want to give Michael Hyatt said, when my wife told me this, it literally erased my fear of speaking. Me too. When I was 300 pounds, the only thing that was on my mind when I got on a stage was my body image, my sweat, my sweating, and my shaking. And that's what was going on in my mind. Like literally, I would get on stage. And if you see the very first time I talked, you can see me sweating. And if you watch it, you can see me shaking. And the reason for that, like literally the energetic reason for that is because I'm so self-absorbed hmm. in my thoughts about my insecurities. And I had somebody say, well, what if you thought about them and this content that you deeply believe so much in, which is stages, and you started reversing the, the thoughts and before you ever got on stage, visualizing them taking this content and changing the world and you having an indirect responsibility for that. What if you started to shift your thoughts like that? Because you do care about your content, right Pete? Oh yeah, I do. Like I'm deeply, that's why we started there. And you do know how to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about it because you just moved me, the other person, around you talking about what you're representing. So shift your mind from self-absorbed, selfish thoughts to my content can change their lives and I've got a moral obligation to share it with them. I know it sounds like crazy, but I will no. now get on stage. I meditate about my content. I think about them. I visualize them. I get on stage. I find someone on the left. I find someone on the right. And if there's a middle section, I'll find someone in the middle. And I literally have a one-on-one -on -one conversation the rest of the time. And I'll look at just those people. The audience feels like I'm looking at all of them. And that's what I'm going out with my mindset. And I'm telling you, the people who've been afraid of stages by realizing shift your thoughts and have one talk, that's how you begin to come overcome that fear, Christy. I think anybody in this world can share um, their, a story on a stage. 
And one more other misconception is people think you have to have this, these big stories, these crazy stories. Do you realize what your audience wants? They want to know that you've walked in their shoes. And guess what most of them haven't done? Climb Mount Everest. Right, so when right. somebody gets up there and says, I climb Mount Everest, they're like, I'm probably never going to climb Mount Everest. But when somebody gets up there and says, I just want you to know, I struggled in my relationship with my husband and it was a mess. And we almost, you know, gave up on it multiple times and I wasn't powerful and I wasn't showing up right. And now everybody's like, oh, okay. He or she or whatever mm -hmm. understands what I feel like. But then this happened in my life. And now this is where we're at in our marriage. And so what, what happens is they realize just, 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 just a story, a normal everyday story. They know that you've now walked in their shoes, just like all of them out there. You didn't climb Everest and neither, you know, none of most of the crowd didn't climb Everest or will never will. And so you don't have to have these big, crazy stories. You just have to have relatable stories that your audience can see themselves in. And so that's how you overcome the fear. And we like to start there because when we can help people get clarity and get confidence, then it's game on. I mean, it's game on, Christy. That's awesome. So how do you do that? Like, how do you, I know that you have a program that you're, you're launching right now and that um, I'm super excited to dive into because I spent a day with you and I'm like, I told, I left you the voicemail the other day. I'm like, I want more. I need more Pete. Um, yeah. I want more information. I want more content. So I'm going to be going through this course because for me, and you said it, you said it best. This industry that we're in. When I first started online 13 years ago, I was one of the first people that were online that were creating programs that were talking about coaching, you know, any of that. Now it seems like, and I, I understand because I, and I'm speaking also to a lot of the coaches that have been trained through the QSEA and other places and that are speakers and healers and that sort of thing. It seems like when I'm looking on my Facebook and I'm scrolling or my Instagram, it's all about coaching. Let me help you build your business. Or there's another coach coming up with another program or it's like I'm inundated, right? This. Everybody feels inundated. If they've checked the box somewhere down the road that they like coaching and that they want to be a coach or that they are a coach, they're seeing a lot of that, right? So mm -hmm. how do you, like you said, rise above that noise when I'm like, oh my God, I'm nauseated about this. How do I then stand out in a crowd of people that are already doing this and speaking on stages like you're the person on that stage? And there are literally, I mean, tell us the number. It's astonishing how many speaking engagements are happening like right now in the world. <laughs> just yeah, like, no, no, literally there are millions of stages in people's backyards tomorrow, in people's backyards tomorrow, local stages with 50 couples or 50 men or 50 women or 50 doctors or 50, you know, um, people who are trying to get dialed in on their health or 50 pastors or 50 students or 50, you just name it, like 50, they're, they're everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. And we, I just really believe that what stages do is they do a couple of things. They allow you to stand out above, around, uh, uh, without the noisiness, without the busyness and the noisiness. And, and here's the other thing. There's so many noisy ideas online and it's, I call it bright, shiny object syndrome. Yes. And one of the problems that people have is I just had a lady that I just coached a little bit ago and she's like, I've got to put more content out and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. I'm like, no, you don't. You, I, when I got started, I fell into the trap of bright, shiny objects. So I did a launch. I thought I had to build a blog. I thought I had to put a lot of content out and I started doing all these things, spinning my wheels with these ideas that you're talking about. And at the end of the day, they didn't generate customers. And when you don't generate customers, you can't have an impact and you definitely can't have a business. And that's why businesses go under. The powerful thing about a stage is physical or digital, one stage, captive audience, one hour, you're the one figuratively speaking above the crowd. So you automatically stand out. And what happens in that hour, I call it the one hour launch because the sales cycle is shortened significantly because they get to experience you. And when they experience you, they say the words, I want more of that person up there because they are powerful and I need more of them in my life. And now I had a great online marketer tell me, 
dude, like one hour on one stage, all of your content gets consumed at one time. Like if I put an hour of content out on the internet, my hope is that they will consume it in the next year because if they consume an hour of my content online, they're probably going to become a customer, but it's not easy to get an hour online consumed. It might take me a year. What I'm telling you is the beautiful thing about a stage is it takes an hour and it's powerful. And so I'm a, I'm a big advocate of that. And I'm a big advocate of like, start small, start with the local stage or start with a podcast or start with a, like, think about this. This is a stage today. This is a stage. Like I did a hundred online stages last year and generated multiple seven figures with my six little feet of my three kiddos running around right above me. <laughs> and, and literally right above me. And I'm like, Hey babe, I mute it. Be like, Hey Kim, I'm on a podcast. And then I get back to the podcast, but like, and then I only have to do 14 physical stages. I don't have to be a road warrior. Right. Like those 14 physical stages generated multiple seven figures. And so this combination of both the digital and physical stages coming together is the perfect match in helping your audience get their message out to the world. It just well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that too, because there's the other extreme of it. Then, you know, I've got um, a dear friend, Lisa Nichols. She is a road warrior. I mean, she was gone, I think last year, like 320 days. And, you know, uh, I have good friends that um, they do, they travel so much. And so for someone like myself, that's got small kids that has a husband that I actually like being with, <laughs> you know, and I can't travel with him all the time because we have small kids that are in school. Um, you know, it, it is, I'm, I'm clear and I've been very clear for the past several years that I want to be home and I want to travel as least as possible. And so that was something that excited me when we were having a conversation. You're like, could you do eight to 12 stages a year? And I'm like, I would actually love that. I would welcome that. And you're like, PS, by the way, you could do it in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm like, loving that even more. Because I could go there, come back, and I don't have to get on a flight and, you know, do the whole time change and all that kind of stuff too. I mean, that will happen, but more so to do it in my own backyard and to be able to have impact, it's, it's, it's amazing. So I'm, I'm grateful for this conversation. Um, I'm grateful for what you're bringing to awareness because, you know, I talk about it all the time. We're both metaphysical and physical. It's both and, right? There's mm -hmm. the spiritual side of money and then there's the physical side of money. So okay. when you're building a business of any kind, right? I have a lot of coaches. I have a lot of healers, practitioners, um, people that are very much into um, metaphysical, you know, energy and that sort of thing. But they're in different jobs. They're in the medical profession. They're financial planners. They're real estate agents. There's a lot of different... Um, fields that they're in. And when you can do both and do, do the digital plus the speaking, right. Or even just like you said, some of it could be virtual and some of it could be in person. Yep. It, it, it just balances things. And like you were saying, stages are not going away. No, no. And that's, that's the other thing you said it, but you were actually saying something that I told you on Saturday. I haven't said it here. Stages have been around for 2000 years because people desire human connection. They desire to be connected to another person. Like that's how we're wired. That's how we're created. And so 2000 years ago in the Colosseum or in whatever, like there were people that actually used stages to grow their business, grow their ministry, grow their movement, whatever it was back then. Like there were stages then. And here's what I like to say. Stages are still here 2000 years ago. But think about all the marketing mediums are what I are in the what I call the marketing medium graveyard. Think about somebody today told me, oh, that's so true. Like I tried to use Periscope a few years ago and I tried to use MySpace <laughs> and I used to use the yellow pages. And I'm like, you're referring to all of the marketing mediums graveyard. Like, listen, Facebook is beautiful today, but it might be gone tomorrow or maybe not tomorrow, but 10 years from now. What's going to be the next YouTube? What's going to be the next, you know, whatever, like marketing mediums come and go, but stages are forever because the, the core of what they're about is human connection and people mm -hmm. desire to be connected. And by the way, more so than any time in what I have an understanding of our history, like this is probably one of the times where people feel the least connected in the history of our world and which makes them a major competitive advantage for people, Christy. And so I love yeah. it. Yeah. Love it. I love this conversation. I want to have everybody continue just to dive into your information. So I know you're giving away a free gift um, mm -hmm. that you generously are coming with. We're actually going to put a link underneath the video. So can you share what that free gift is for everybody? 
Yeah, so one time a year, a couple of years ago, we, did, we, we sold this product to our students and, and they loved it. And this year we decided to roll it out as a workshop. And so over the next 10 days, we have this incredible workshop that uh, it's called the Y Stages Workshop. And we're gonna do um, three core things. We're gonna get people clarity and confidence on one talk. And we're actually gonna have them practice at low stakes with my team online. They're gonna be able to submit things and my team is gonna help coach them, but not before we train them on how to do that. And they don't have to submit it, but I'm asking them to step out outside of their comfort zone so that you can do it low stakes with my team who's gonna have grace and love and compassion on you. So we're gonna get them clear and clarity on their talk and get them coaching around it. And then one of them actually, we're gonna fly out to spend two days with us and we're gonna build their talk out in two days. And so that's the first piece of the workshop. Second piece of the workshop is um, we're going to show them all the stages that exist and we're going to help them understand um, the power of stages and how to begin to win these stages um, because our system was built for a guy who is the best kept secret. A lot of people are like, who's going to want me on, my, on their stage? Nobody wanted Daryl on the stage. Nobody knew who Daryl was. So I actually had to create a system that one stage is like, listen, Damon John gets a phone call to be on the stage, but most people don't. And I'm gonna show them how we've created this system to win a stage. And then I'm gonna give them a, a whole book of 2000 stages that are broken down by every niche and in industry so that they can start to see themselves and visualize themselves on some of those stages and circling some of those. And then I think it's really, really important of how we end the workshop. We show them the most important piece which is attracting customers from every podcast, every local stage and every live that you're on. Because Zig Ziglar said, I've never changed someone's life, life from a stage, but if they buy my tapes, cassettes and programs, I got a shot at changing their lives. Because he knew if you could be in their ear every day, just like he would be in their ear every day, you change their lives. And so we have a moral obligation now to have stages become a major customer acquisition strategy for us. And I'm gonna show them the simplistic way on how every digital and physical stage that they're on will begin to attract customers for them. So that's the workshop or we're going to okay. conclude it with like a full master class, and then to end it with like the cherry on top, I'm going to bring 30 meeting planners who control thousands of digital and physical st stages in all different industries. And I'm going to interview them over seven hours live just to get inside their minds on what it takes to win their stages. And then I've asked a lot of them if they would be willing to give stages away. And so we're going to conclude it. If I teach you the system, but I don't help you understand me be the matchmaker to the people who control the stages, you know, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to show them these people who have stages and what it takes to really get on their stages. So, and they're going to give a lot of stages away, including a TEDx stage um, is going to be given away as well. So it's going to be powerful. It's going to be a powerful workshop. And it just goes on for the next couple of weeks, one time a year. So, well, that is an extremely generous gift. Yeah. Thanks. Usually, someone gives like an ebook or something. That is yeah. incredible. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Thank you for that. That is really. That's why I just, I just love that about you. Your generosity is just really beautiful. And I'm, I'm grateful you're my new friend. I'm grateful to learn from you. I'm grateful for um, the simplicity that you've brought into my mindset lately. And for what you're doing, for for being um, literally, it's like that song, the wind beneath, you know, the, you're the oh. wind beneath a lot of people's wings. Wow. And so um, I, I really appreciate you, Pete, and and I'm grateful that you're here with yeah. everybody. You know, you know, my calling is an ironically different calling. Somebody a couple of weeks ago said you are going to be one of the most unknown, known people for helping known folks get their message out to the world. And the first story I thought about, and I don't share this ever, is right across the street from me is the Air Force Academy. These are preparing future people to go serve our country. Thousands of cadets are right across the street from me. And I remember the day that I won the stage where Daryl got to go speak to all the cadets. It took me a year to win that stage. And we were trying to get into the government because we felt like we could impact the government. And we won this stage. And I remember sitting at the top of the balcony with all of the generals thinking I was big stuff because I was up there and Daryl was down on the ground speaking to all the thousands of cadets. And he took a left turn that day. He did something he never does. He said, hey, I believe that some of you right now are holding on to unforgiveness. For un you're either unfor you're not forgiving yourself or some people in your life. And before you can go out and serve our country, I want you to get clear of that unforgiveness. 
He said, the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life was forgive those two boys that took my daughter's life. But yet it was the most profound thing that I ever did. It gave me freedom. And so as they closed their eyes and he, he led them through this, this time of forgiveness, the cadets started crying and tearing up. And I'm up there with the generals and the generals are tearing up. And the only thought that came to my mind is I have an indirect connection and responsibility to this happening. And that's what I feel like with all of our students. Like maybe I'm not the one sharing the message, but I'm the one that's opening up the doors. And I'm proud to say that our students over the last 18 months have booked 47,000 stages wow. using our system. So what took me 13, 14 years to do, they've two times it in the last 18 months using this system. And I feel like my hand is on all of those messages being shared because they wouldn't have otherwise been able to share it. And so the same way I felt there is what I feel about every stage we book and I love it, so. Beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, thank you. Go below the link, you'll get Pete's um, a very generous gift, his workshop, that's amazing. Um, and I wanna hear from you. Let's continue this conversation. What are you taking away? What what did you kind of just change your mindset around on your thoughts about speaking? Are you a little more open? Are you a little less fearful? Are you excited to take the workshop? I want to hear from you. Thank you so much for being in my community, for being who you are, for trusting me, for taking the time to listen to me. And Pete, thank you again for being here and doing what you do. Thanks, Thanks everybody. You're welcome. Thanks everybody. Go below the video, click on the workshop, and I uh, will see you on the inside. Bye everyone. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought. Leave me a comment below and be sure to share and tag your friends. And be sure to check out my other videos here and on this site.